Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Welcome back to this Management Accounts training series. In this video, part two, I'm going to teach you what needs to be done to prepare management accounts because most of the work involved, most of the time involved when it comes to management accounts is actually preparing the financial accounts to run management accounts and that'll make more sense as this video goes on. If you're using accounting software then creating a set of management accounts can be done at the click of a button. So actually producing the management accounts themselves doesn't take that much time. Compiling them, making some notes about them, there's not much time commitment involved. A lot of the time a lot of the effort with management accounts is actually getting the data ready, is preparing the financial accounts in order to run a set, an accurate set of management accounts. And this video will make more sense as it goes on. If you've joined the series here, go back and start from part one. So let's jump right in. It is a Friday late afternoon. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Okay, preparing management accounts. How do we prepare a set of management accounts? First things first, all the bookkeeping must be done for the period that we want to run management accounts for. So let's say, hypothetically, we want to run a set of management accounts for the last three months, and let's say those three months are January, February, March 2024. To do that, all the bookkeeping must be done for that period, January, February, March, 2024. Double entry bookkeeping is best. That will ensure that the, uh, the management accounts are accurate, that the financial accounts are accurate, and it will make compiling management accounts much easier. It's not essential that a double entry bookkeeping system is used, but I highly recommend that double entry bookkeeping is used. On another note, I also highly recommend that accounting software is used. If you plan on running regular management accounts for your business or for your client's business or whatever the entity is, using accounting software will make the process a lot less time consuming and make the reports a lot more accurate than using Excel. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing inherently wrong with using Microsoft Excel, and I'll be using Excel as these videos go on to compile and to create and explain the financial reports within a set of management accounts. But ideally, accounting software, something like Sage, Zero, QuickBooks, or any other accounting package is best. Any questions about that, use the comment section below. I love hearing your questions. I hit love hearing from you. So use the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Okay, so all the bookkeeping must be done. What does that involve? It means that all the sales invoices must be accounted for. So if you're using accounting software, all the sales invoices must be on the accounting software. If the entity is using Excel, then all the sales invoices must be accounted for on the Excel spreadsheet or whatever is being used. That's the same with purchase invoices. So sales invoices are invoices raised and sent to customers. Purchase invoices are invoices the entity is receiving from suppliers. Customer payments, supplier payments, all these things must be accounted for as well as all the bank transactions. So this is the day-to-day -day transactions of the business must be fully accounted for for the period we want to run a set of management accounts for. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. This is not a bookkeeping course. I am teaching you about management accounts and preparing management accounts. If you do not understand bookkeeping, 
then take a bookkeeping course. I have a course just like this one, which is all about bookkeeping. It's all for free. Let me just bring that up now. I don't want to make this about promoting uh, my website or anything like that, but here we go. Freebookkeepingaccounting.com. This is my website. Head over here. Click on free stuff. There is a bookkeeping basics course. Also accountancy basics, payroll basics. Okay, let's bring up the slide again. Here we go. So all the bookkeeping must be done. Once again, this is not a bookkeeping course. If you need help with bookkeeping, go and watch my bookkeeping course and come back to this one. What else needs to be done to prepare to run a set of management accounts? Wages journals. Once again, this is not a wages journals or payroll training course. I have one of them for free all on my website. Go check it out. But the wages journals must be done for the period that we want to run management accounts for. So that includes um, posting to the net wages control account, gross wages expense, any deductions such as tax, national insurance in the US, that's social security, student loan deductions, pension contributions. There could be deductions for other things such as a company car, salary sacrifice, lots of different things. All these things must be accounted for in the financial accounts in order to create a accurate set of management accounts. Now, management accounts can be created at any point. You could create a set of management accounts without doing the wages journals. But those management accounts are not going to be accurate. And if they're not accurate, they're not worth analyzing, they're not worth using. If you're not using and reviewing and making business decisions on accurate data, then there's just no point doing it. It's a waste of time. So the bookkeeping, the wages journals, ensures that the management accounts are accurate, that everything is accounted for. That's what we're trying to do, is ensure everything is accounted for. So between all the bookkeeping and ensuring all the wages journals are done, that's a good portion, that's a, a good amount of work that needs to be done before a set of management accounts can be created. So to prepare a set of management accounts, all the bookkeeping must be done, the wages journals. Also, reconciliations. Everything must be reconciled. It's great if the bank account is reconciled, but everything should be reconciled in order to ensure the management accounts are accurate. So I've put bank accounts with the uh, plurality, the S here, in brackets, because there could be multiple bank accounts. There could also be savings accounts. So current accounts, checking accounts, savings accounts, all those things should be fully reconciled for the period we want to run management accounts for. Supplier accounts. How do we reconcile supplier accounts? Well, we request statements, if we're not already receiving them, from our suppliers. And we reconcile the financial accounts, whatever's on the accounting software or our Excel spreadsheets, against the supplier statements. So just as you reconcile a bank account to a bank statement, you reconcile supplier accounts to supplier statements. So all supplier accounts must be reconciled. When you do a bank reconciliation, it highlights potential duplicates, things you've missed, transactions that need adding, things like that. It's the same with supplier accounts. When you reconcile supplier accounts, it could be you realize you're missing certain purchase invoices or payments were made that aren't showing, things like that. So reconcile the supplier accounts. Also the customer accounts. Now this one's a bit more tricky because you don't receive a statement from your customers generally. But what you can do is do a statement run and send statements to your customers. And then if anything's not right, they'll soon contact you. If they've made a payment to the entity and it hasn't been recorded and showing on the statement, then they'll soon let you know. Loan accounts. 
repayments of loans, but also interest on those loans. Same with credit cards. The interest on the credit cards, the transactions on the credit card accounts all need accounting for. And then the last one is tax. And this is a very common one. This one's often not reconciled. So any tax accounts that are sitting on the, the balance sheet for a business must be reconciled. That could be uh, tax on profits. It could be tax to do with wages. It could be sales tax accounts and things like that. All these things should be reconciled. And you can generally get a statement from your tax authority and reconcile to that statement. So reconcile all of this. The amount of times I've worked with clients that are running reports and they've never reconciled any account, let alone the bank account. And the amount of times that I have a business running regular reports and they only reconcile the bank account. These things shouldn't happen. Everything should be reconciled. This is good accounting. This is good bookkeeping. If you want to be a good bookkeeper, you do all these things. You do wages journals and you reconcile everything. The tax accountant will love you if you do all those things. Okay, what else should be done before we prepare a set of management accounts? Tax reports. So any tax reports that need preparing and filing should be done for the period before management accounts are run. So the two most common are VAT, which is sales tax reports. Sometimes they need filing every month or every quarter. Make sure they've been done for the period. And also any payroll reports. But there could be other tax reports too. Like here in the UK, we have CIS tax for some businesses. That should be run. But there could be lots of other sort of tax uh, returns that need compiling and filing. Any questions, let me know below. So these are the areas that you need to focus on. These are the areas that need to be done in order to have accurate management accounts. And this is where a lot of the time is taken up, is doing these tasks, the bookkeeping, the wages journals, the reconciliations, and the tax reports. Once all of that has been done, you're in a good place to run a set of management accounts. Okay, what's included in a set of management accounts? Because this takes us to the next step in this series, in this course. The management accounts are a set of financial reports, and these are the financial reports that are generally included in a set of management accounts. Sometimes it's just a couple of these. It could be a bit mix and match. It could be that the directors want two or three from this list, but we're going to cover all the main reports that should be included in a set of management accounts. That way we've covered all the bases, and I want to cover each of these in detail. Don't worry if you don't know what these reports are. That's why you're taking this course. I will explain all these things to you. But the profit and loss statement and the balance sheet, these two reports are the reports that at bare minimum should be included in a set of management accounts. So if someone wants a very basic set of management accounts, that could be just a profit and loss statement and a balance sheet for the period. Every month, every quarter, whatever it is they want. Age debtors, age creditors reports, cash flow forecasts, sales and profit graphs, notes and analysis for each of the reports. All these things, though, are generally included in a very extensive and detailed set of management accounts. And in the next video, we'll start working through this list and I'll start going through each of these financial reports in detail. But to emphasize how do you prepare a set of management accounts? It's these things listed in this video. How you do each of these things is a course within itself. And I have those courses on my website. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll speak to you in part three, where we'll start looking at the profit and loss statement.